puck. Who will go number one? Who's climbing? Who's sliding? All the draft hysteria with the expert and participant perspectives. Plus, is this wolf leaving the pack? Or might this Mav be riding out of the Big D? You've been selected for the NBA Today. Next. Thanks for dropping in on the NBA Today. Dave Revson with you as we preview the NBA Draft. Elgin Baylor, David Aldridge, Dick Vitale, Andy Katz all set to join us. Should be a great program. It also promises to be one of the stranger NBA drafts that we've ever seen with high schoolers, foreign players, and underclassmen projected to dominate the lottery selections. Michael Jordan and the Wizards, of course, have the first pick, and much of the speculation has revolved around the high schooler Kwame Brown, big man out of Georgia. He spoke with ESPN.com's Andy Katz. There's never been a high school senior as the number one pick in the NBA draft. There might be on Wednesday, and it might be Kwame Brown. Can you believe the way your stock has climbed since a year ago when you were going to ABCD and then signing with Florida, and now you might be the number one pick in the draft? Yeah, it's, it's great. It's unbelievable. But, you know, uh, God works. You know, he just does great things and gets his hands on a situation. So who knows? I may be history. You told me in Chicago that you'd love to go to Washington and be a sponge for Michael Jordan and absorb all his knowledge of the game. How much do you want to be in that position? And if you are pick number one, that they keep the pick so you can go to Washington. Uh, that would be a great situation you know, because you'll learn from the best. Uh, Michael Jordan is considered the best in the game, and I agree with most analysts. Uh, uh, if I go to that situation, then Michael Jordan would be like a big brother to me if he allowed that. Um, I would go there and just learn as much as I could from the best. So, I mean, it's the greatest situation you can have. You could go one, Tyson Chandler could go two. That'd be two high school players in the top two. It'd be pretty unique. Is it just a unique year for high school seniors? Yeah, I mean, I think uh, a new trend is starting. They're starting to not be so skeptical of high school players because of Kobe and because of Garnett. I think they open up doors for us young and up-and-coming players. But uh, I think it's going to be a good situation because now they'll see that high school players, it doesn't matter about age. It's just about character and what kind of person you are, how hard you're willing to work. Well, Kwame Brown might be either the number one pick, maybe probably no lower than number two. Let's go back to the studio. Andy, thanks. Andy's mock draft does have Brown going first to Washington. As he mentioned, another high schooler going second, California big man Tyson Chandler, headed to the Clips. An actual college senior in Andy's third spot. Imagine that. Shane Battier to Atlanta. And then another high schooler, Chicago area native Eddie Curry, going to the Bulls. The full mock draft available for your perusal on ESPN.com. David Aldridge joins us now from the ESPN Zone in New York. And, David, that list we just saw, obviously contingent on no deals being made. So now we ask you, what are you hearing in terms of potential deals? Well, there's always deals that are being talked about or made. But the biggest one right now is Clippers talking to uh, the New Jersey Nets. Stephon Marbury's name is in this deal. Stephon Marbury for, uh, for Keon Dooling in the second pick overall uh, was the deal that uh, both sides have talked about and talked more than just a little bit about. It's up to Donald Sterling, the Clippers owner right now, if he wants to pay Stephon Marbury the balance of his contract. He's got a significant contract, obviously. And uh, if that happens, then that's what, uh, that's what the deal is going to be. Uh, but right now, that deal is not happening. That's just being, it's on, the, it's on the burner. I wouldn't say the back burner, but the front burner. There's other stuff going on as well. Obviously, Washington's sitting there at number one. They got, a, they got uh, some discussions with Vancouver about Sharif Abdurrahim for the, over, for the first pick overall. Obviously, it would have to involve a lot of players because the Wizards, right against the salary cap, right against the luxury tax, you'd have to put a lot of guys into it. Right now, it doesn't look like that deal is going to happen. Just you have to put so many guys in the deal. The other team that's the action team right now is Chicago. Do they move up or down? They tried to move up. Package that included Elton Brand. They can deny it all they want, but they did talk to the Wizards about an Elton Brand deal. Uh, it didn't happen, uh, but that discussion has been ongoing and, and, and continues to go on. The other guy that's in play right now is Paul Gasol, the, uh, the seven-footer from Barcelona. Right now, Cleveland at number eight is trying to move up to number six so that they can take Gasol at number six. Golden State's going to stay at five. They're not going to make any deals right now. If Gasol get, goes any higher than that, it would be somewhat of a surprise. I know there's some discussion about that. Right now, Cleveland thinks at six they can get him moving in with Vancouver moving down to number eight. You were talking about the Wizards, David, with that number one pick and maybe trying to move around. Let's say they do keep the number one pick. 
Who do you project Washington taking there? Well, if they keep the pick, David, it's Kwame Brown. That's the guy that they like. Antonio McDice, they see him as Antonio McDice, a power forward who can put the ball on the floor, who can continue to put on weight, maybe play some five for you down the road, but right now could step right in at power forward and give you some significant minutes. Great upside, great kid. Although Tyson Chandler's still on their list, I think Doug Collins likes Tyson Chandler an awful lot and wouldn't mind taking him at all, but I think Kwame Brown has impressed more people. As a matter of fact, one team that's not in the lottery, who have no reason to lie, told me that they asked all the guys, all the big men that had come in to work out, who was the best prospect you played against, to a man. This was six or eight guys. They all said Kwame Brown was the best guy they had played against. All right, David Aldridge, thanks a lot. We'll be back with you in just a minute or two here on the show. So as David said, a good chance that a high schooler will be taken for the first time ever with the number one overall pick in the draft. That brings us then to the team with the second pick in the draft. Now let's go to the envelopes and find out the final result. The third pick goes to the Atlanta Hawks. The second pick goes to the Los Angeles Clippers. So the L.A. Clippers among the big winners in the draft lottery, securing the number two pick in Wednesday's draft. And here to talk a little bit about it is Elgin Baylor, the VP of Basketball Operations for the Clippers. And Elgin, let's talk a little bit about your team because you're not the typical team you see in the number two spot, a team that finished very well last year, particularly at home. Do you have the luxury now with that number two pick of maybe looking to fill a specific need, or are you still looking for the best player available? Well, you know, you know, we're looking for every option available, you know, even so far as in, you know, trading the pick. Uh, so far, you know, we haven't gotten anything that we can, you know, say that, uh, <clears throat> that we're comfortable with right now. Some things that you like, but uh, it depends uh, how much you have to give up to do it. As far as our pick, uh, no secret that uh, we're not going to take a one or two. We're looking from three on up to the five position. Uh, we would like to get you know, someone that's athletic that can run because uh, we blend in with the type of team that we have. We have a lot of good athletes on this team. And uh, I'm thinking that this year we like to uh, really play an up-tempo game and just run with every opportunity. Well, you talked a bit about the possibility of trading that pick in our David Aldridge reports. You guys have been talking to the New Jersey Nets about the possibility of acquiring Stephon Marbury, maybe trading that pick along with Keon Dooling. What are the possibilities for that deal and any uh, other deals? No, you know, I never get into discussion, you know, trades or, poss you know, possibilities of, you know, anything of that, you know, nature until something is consummated. Uh, we have talked to New Jersey. We've talked to a lot of teams. And uh, when, you know, something's consummated, then I would have you know, more to say about it. So there's been a lot of talk, Elgin, about the high schoolers in the draft and the underclassmen. From your role as a talent evaluator, how does having all these young kids in the draft change your role? Well, you know, it, it, it really, uh, uh, they're so happy they're the best players in the draft. And when you go into the draft, you try to get the, the most talented player you can possibly get. And what has happened, I think, with so many kids coming out of high school and going directly now to the pros, the quality in college is not going to be as good. And so that's what is happening right now, and you just cannot pass up on talent. And I don't think any of the teams are going to pass up an opportunity if they think they can get a talented young player. Is it tougher to evaluate a kid, though, who hasn't played at the collegiate level? Well, it's, it's, you know, it's, 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 it's different levels. You know, like a, a kid coming from high school, going to college, it's, 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 you know, it's another step up. And from college players coming to the pros, it's another level. So, you know, you, you can evaluate the talent. You don't know how well they're going to do at this level. It's the same thing for a college player, unless it's a shack or can't miss. Uh, college players, a lot of college players have spent three, four years in college that failed, you know, in the NBA. So it's, uh, the only thing you can evaluate is the guy that has <clears throat> an upside, that he does have potential. And generally when you get him, you're looking a couple of years from now. You don't expect the player to come in right away, which, um, it, you know, is possible. We had Darius Miles came in last year and made an immediate impact. But that was a different situation because we had spots available. The year before, we didn't do very well, so he got an opportunity to play. A lot of the kids that come in, some of the kids won't get an opportunity to play. It'll take them a couple of years before they really get a chance to develop. You talked about Darius, also mentioned some of the other great young players you guys have, Lamar Odom, 
What are the chances, do you think, for keeping this team intact? I mean, historically, the Clippers have been a franchise that, frankly, guys have tried to flee from. That does seem to be changing a little bit. Do you think you're going to be able to hang on to this core of young players? Well, uh, yes, we're going to do everything possible to keep this uh, team together. You know, hopefully that we can uh, continue to get talent and whatever it takes to, you know, make this uh, team better, you know, uh, we're going to be doing it. All right, Clippers VP of Basketball Operations, Elgin Baylor, thanks so much for taking the time to talk to us. Thank you very much. So much more to come on the NBA today. He's done everything possible at the college level, but he still may not go at the top of the draft. What's Dick Vitale's take on Shane Battier and the high schoolers who may go ahead of him? We'll talk to Dickie B next. That, of course, the familiar voice of Dick Vitale, who joins us now from his home in Sarasota, Florida. Dick, thanks a lot for taking the time out. We saw some video of Shane Battier there coming in. This is a guy you've been watching for four years playing at Duke. What's your take as we look forward to the NBA draft on the possibility of a high schooler maybe being taken ahead of him? Well, you know, Dave, it seems that it's going to be Kwame Brown, probably number one. And number two, unless there's a trade, it looks like Tyson Chandler will go number two to the Clippers. What really amazes me, and these kids have certainly a great upside and loads of potential, but I want to send a bulletin loud and clear to Michael Jordan. It's not too late yet, Mr. Jordan. Listen to me. Uno number one, as Tony Kornheiser has said on his radio show, and I say the same, echo these two words, Shane Battier, Shane Battier. You know, the people in Washington deserve a winner. They deserve somebody who can come in, give them productivity on the court, handle himself in a classy way, and that equates to Shane Battier. Hey, Dave, he's not exactly 35 years of age. He's 22 years of age. He's 6'9 with sneakers on. He can shoot the basketball. He can defend exceptionally well. He knows how to win. He's a great kid, great attitude. How can you bypass him for rolling the dice on some high school kid because you're dreaming about Kevin Garnett and Kobe Bryant. What would have happened to Larry Bird and Magic Johnson if they went through all these workouts? Would they get bypassed because they're not super quick? Shane Battier is the most productive potential player right now coming out of college who is ready to perform and give a team instant help at this moment. Well, now, Dick, if Battier doesn't get chosen number one, which, as he said, it doesn't look like he will, what will that say about the college game? I mean, is this, in a sense, ruining the college game that's making kids say, man, I've got to get out of here early because otherwise my stock's going to fall rather than rise? Not really, Dave. You know, when you think about the high school kids, they're not our problem. I mean, the high school kids have been very productive that have come out early. There's been 11 high school players that have been drafted since 1995. Seven of them are getting major minutes and are very productive. And they also have financial bonanzas. So I can't blame these high school kids. That's not the problem. You know, we make such a big thing about four or five kids that come out and we say, wow. Well, five kids is not going to affect the college game. What affects the college game are all the players that come out early, that come out early from college that aren't ready to play. Last year, Donnell Harvey never got off the pine in Dallas. Joel Prisbella never really got off the pine in Milwaukee. Michael Red, William Avery two years ago, Eric Barkley. Those guys don't develop because they don't get play in time. Now, if you're a high school kid who's coming in and you're going to get playing time, Ola Garnett and Brian, and certainly now Rashard Lewis, you look out there, Al Harrington, and you think of Tracy McGrady, those kids have come in and have been major factors. College will go on. But I'll tell you this, what I'd like to see adopted, and I just don't understand why the three can't sit down, the big three, David Stern, Cedric Dempsey, and Billy Hunter in a players' union, the three of them sit down and adopt a plan that's utilized in baseball. Baseball, if a kid wants to come out of high school, let them sign. No problem. But if you enter college, they're not eligible to be drafted until they complete their third year. We hear about lawsuits. Well, how come there aren't lawsuits in baseball? And I know about Spencer Haywood and their lawsuits. I could go on, Dave, about this. But you know what I get amazed? Billy Hunter now represents the players. Why aren't the players saying, hey, wait a minute. We got all these kids coming out early, and they're taking jobs away from guys who really veteran players who could be there producing and said some kid has to sit the pine or have a position like a Michael Red, like an Eric Barkley, and 
they're not ready to play. All right, Dick Vitale, as always, thanks so much for sharing your opinions with us. Joining us from hey. his home in Florida. Hey, Dave, that's all I get. No more air time. Kwame <laughs> Brown, Chandler, batty A3 to Atlanta. I think they'll make the decision to go batty A instead of going young again like they did with Lamar Johnson's potential. Batty A is a winner. Jordan, get batty A. Dick, thanks a lot. Still to come on the show, we'll talk free agency. Will Michael Finley stay in Dallas? And where might some other big names end up? David Aldridge weighs in next. Lost in the first round of the playoffs, and each have flipped Saunders' first five full seasons in Minnesota. And the team has been stripped of four of its next five first-round picks due to the Joe Smith controversy. So you would think this would be a good time for Saunders to escape for greener pastures. Well, despite the obvious obstacles, though, Saunders has decided to stick around, turning down an offer to coach the Blazers and instead signing a two-year extension with the Wolves. I think that if I left, and even though I left and had success, that I would always look back you know, when I, at Minnesota and say I didn't accomplish what I said I was wanting to accomplish when I went there. Saunders giving up his GM duty says, though, he will still have a say in player personnel decisions. One other coaching tidbit this week, Kevin O'Neill, leaving the Knicks, will join his good friend Rick Carlisle as an assistant in Detroit. All right, let's switch gears now, bring back in David Aldridge. Let's look at the free agent front, David. All the action, of course, starting July 1st, and a lot of the focus is going to be on Chris Weber. Absolutely. You know, there's a lot of talk about Weber going down to Orlando, but I'm telling you, the guy they want is Antonio Davis. They, have, they think they have a great shot at signing him. They're very confident. They'll have to make some moves. They'll have to clear some cap room, but I don't think they'll have to max him out to get him down to Orlando. They will have to move some guys, probably Michael Doliak involved in that. So uh, Davis, is the guy, or Davis is the guy for Orlando. As far as Weber goes, Detroit will have room, but I think Dave, he's, Detroit's going to be a conduit. They're going to be a third team in a potential sign-and-trade deal. I don't see them signing Weber for themselves. The only team that really can do that is Houston. I think Houston has an opportunity to do it with the guys that they have, but I don't know that that's going to be the destination. I think right now, sign-and-trade is still the more likely scenario for Weber with him going through Detroit somewhere else. All right, David Aldridge, keeping his ear to the ground, or... Perhaps more accurately, his ear to the cell phone from the ESPN Zone in New York. Thanks a lot, David. Thank you, David. Danny Manning may be on the market as well. Said Monday plans to opt out of the final year of his contract in Utah and become a free agent. Manning looking for a club that will pay him more than the $1.32 million he is scheduled to make next season. Some news on Michael Finley in Dallas. The All-Star guard has exercised an option in his contract that allows him to test the free agent waters. A move Coach Don Nelson says he fully expected. Doesn't seem to be any real need to panic for Nelly and company, though. Finley has indicated he will return next season. And one other note this week, the Grizzlies have begun moving their basketball operations to Memphis. This despite the fact the league has yet to formally approve the move. Coach Sidney Lowe said a decision is expected this week and that the team is confident that things will work out. Still to come on the show, more draft analysis. Who'll go where? Plus, Andy Katz talks with another potential lottery pick, Duke Shane Battier. The top college senior to go in this draft, maybe the only college senior to go in the lottery, is Shane Battier. Shane, how amazed are you the way this draft has changed with so many underclassmen, a couple of high school seniors at the top of this draft? Well, it's a, it's a different draft this year. It's a little bit unconventional from that standpoint, and uh, I think I may be one of the last seniors you see up this high uh, for a long while. Now, how disappointed are you going to be if you maybe don't go in the first couple of spots? You told me in Chicago that fit is better for you. So let's say you go five or six. Is that okay with you? That's fine. Uh, as long as I go to a team where I, I can play and that can help, um, I'll be satisfied. You had a great career. You said it ended the way you wanted it with a championship uh, in Minneapolis. Would this be the culmination, or is this just the next step? This is just the next step. Uh, a lot of hoopla surrounds the draft, but it's not, uh, it's not being invited to the party. It's what you do when you're inside. A lot of coaches would like to have Shane Battier, mainly because he can play right away. GMs and execs probably going to go for those high school seniors. It gives them a little bit longer time to see them develop. Let's go back to the studio. Andy and Shane, thanks. Wang Zhuzhu, the first Chinese national to play in the NBA, may not be back with the Mavericks next year. The seven-footer said his future hinges on negotiations between his former team in China and his current club in Dallas. The player's agent essentially declined to comment, saying only, quote, China has a saying, the road to happiness is strewn with setbacks. Maybe this will help. A couple of NBA stars were in China Friday. Antoine Jameson of the Warriors and the Raptors' Jerome Williams held a clinic for Chinese school kids and coaches 
in Beijing's famous Forbidden City as part of the NBA's Friendship Tour. Jazz rookie Deshaun Stevenson has been charged with statutory rape after a 14-year-old girl's mother accused him of having sex with her daughter in Stevenson's hometown of Fresno. According to police reports, Stevenson admitted to the incident in a recorded phone conversation with the mother. Stevenson, who was arrested and subsequently released after posting $5,000 bail, faces up to three years in prison if convicted. Coming up, it is Washington in the catbird seat. Showtime highlighting that club's draft history next. Yeah. UNBA Tids, Brandy Reed's been suspended for the rest of the season by Phoenix Mercury team president Seth Solka. Reed, who was the Mercury's lone all-star last season, was originally suspended last month for conduct detrimental to the team. And Sonny Allen has resigned as the Monarchs coach after a disappointing 6-6 six six start. Allen, who has been in coaching for six decades, is retiring from the game as Maura McHugh takes over. Other news, the NBA Players Association planning to file a grievance against the league in response to the $15,000 fine that the NBA imposed against the Magic earlier this month. The fine stemmed from a donation the club made to a charity in Grant Hill's name, which the league says is a violation of the salary cap. Orlando says it's made similar donations each of the last five years without any complaints by the league. Thursday, 9 p.m. Eastern on ESPN Classic, Game 6 of the 98 Finals, MJ's last game with the Bulls. Will he be with the Wizards next season? That one big question hanging over Washington's team. Another is who they will take with the top pick. Showtime, showcasing Washington's number one picks of the last 10 years. With the first pick, the Washington Bullets select... <laughs> For us, thanks to David Aldridge, Dick Vitale, Andy Katz, and Elgin Baylor. We'll see you same time next week on the NBA Today. I wasn't expecting to land at first, first go, you know.